something, do something. What's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I am a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sports and commercial work. And today I'm going to teach you how you can easily create the clone trail effect that you just saw in the Gatorade commercial at the start of this video. It's really just a little bit of masking, a little bit of time, and you can actually put your own spin on it, which is kind of nice. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to be using After Effects, but you can use the concepts that I use in this video and apply them to Premiere Pro or whatever other editing software that you like to use. So without further ado, let's get into the video. We have our clip here. We're going to hold option and drag up so we can get a copy of that clip. We'll move the one that's not linked to the top and then we're gonna right click on it and click replace with After Effects composition. This is going to open Adobe After Effects for us. And this is where we're going to be doing a lot of our masking. I prefer to do any masking that's gonna be more than something very simple in After Effects. We'll just call this Clone Trail Tutorial and I'm going to save it. So here's our clip. Let's play it back once just so we can see it. All right, so I intend on using the clone effect during this part here where he slowed down in the air. So let's duplicate this clip of Command D. We're gonna turn off the bottom layer so that we just have this top one. And we'll go to the first part where it slows down. Here he seems to slow down. So let's put a marker there, Option M. We're gonna go to where this clip speeds up and we'll go Option M again. And now this is where the mask is going to start and end. Let's take our pen tool and we're going to draw a garbage mat around this player. So a garbage mat is just kind of like a loose mask that surrounds the player roughly, but doesn't precisely hug any of his edges. This is a pretty fast mask to do, which makes the effect kind of easy. And as you can see in the Gatorade commercial, it still looks pretty cool. So we're going to start with our first frame where we put the marker and we're just going to draw a mask around the player. It can be kind of rough. We're not gonna bevel any edges. We're just literally going to tap and make this as rough as humanly possible. I don't like the yellow color of the mask. It's kind of hard to see. So we'll go to masks here, click on this color, and then you get this little pop-up. We can change this to like red or something that's gonna stand out a little bit more. Let's set the resolution to full so that we can really see what we're doing as we draw this mask. And we're just gonna continue drawing the garbage mat around the player, just like this. And there we have the garbage mat. So now this is the mask that we have around the player. So we've already set our marker where we want the effect to start and another marker where we want the effect to end. Now we need to use the tracker to track this mask forward and make adjustments along the way so that it remains around his entire body. So let's go forward with this with just one frame. And we'll continue going one frame at a time. Let's click U to bring up all the keyframes so we can see our mask path. And we're just gonna make small adjustments to this Let's actually just save time and animate every other frame since this is a rough mask anyways. So we're gonna hold control, skip forward two frames, and then hold control, skip forward two frames. And now we're going to reposition the mask so that his body is in it. And you basically just continue doing this process of going forward two frames and then repositioning the mask until you've gotten to the end of your effect. And the reason we're doing every other frame is because After Effects is automatically going to interpret the difference between this keyframe and the next one that's two frames away. So it'll split the difference in this middle keyframe. So by only animating every other keyframe, we can do half the work and still get a similar effect, which is nice. So anyways, I am going to continue doing control and just toggling these keyframes. I'll get through the entire mask here and then I will check back with you guys once this mask is done. All right, so I've now drawn the mask completely for the duration of our effect. And you can see if I just scrub through this mask that it continues to animate and follow the player for the duration of him putting the ball through his legs. Now that we have this effect, we can start duplicating this. And every time we duplicate this layer that has the mask on it, we're gonna get one more clone of our effect. So we can select that layer and then hold Command D and just click D, 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 D. So we've duplicated that layer four times. So now we're going to have four clones trailing our player who's dunking. So this top layer here is going to be the actual player. So we'll just call this player. And then this one can be clone one, clone two, clone three, clone four. So we'll call this layer background. So I'm gonna turn on our background layer here so we can see what we're working with. And we're going to be repositioning our clone layers now so that they start at different times than our original and are positioned a little bit behind the original. So let's select our player layer and all of our clone layers and just cut these where the effect starts and ends. So option and the left bracket, 
for the start and then you go to the end marker and we go back one frame and option and the right bracket and that cuts it right at the end and now we're going to offset our clone layers so let's select them all and go one two with command and the right arrow and drag them all over then select the bottom three one two drag them over one two drag these bottom two over and then one two and we'll drag this last one over now we've got these layers all separated. We have our player and then we have all the clones that are gonna be following him. So now we have to stagger the clones so that we get that trail effect like they had in the Gatorade commercial. So let's go to our first clone. We'll just click P to bring up position and we're gonna reposition this to where we think would be a good place for it given the look of the video. So we're gonna move this around. Let's put it somewhere that kind of seems fitting. Right there seems about good. Now let's just get these to round numbers. Just for our sake, you know, maybe I want to move this in a little, let's try 500. Yeah, there we go. I think that's pretty good. So let's go 850 and 500. Cool. And this is 960 and 540. So we're just going to offset all of these by the same amount. Now you can probably offset these with expressions, but this is supposed to be like a simple clone effect. So I'm literally just going to offset the position values manually since we only need to do it like two or three times. But if you're doing like a ton of clones, then you'd probably want to look up a more complicated tutorial and link this all with expressions. But anyways, this is offset by 110 pixels. This is offset by 40 pixels. So let's just continue to do that. 850, 500, minus 40. Minus 110, 740, minus 110, and 460, minus 40, 630, minus 110, 420, minus 40. All right, now that we've offset the position value of all of the clones, as you go through, you can see that they start to appear and create like this line effect. But when it comes off, you can see that it starts to go off the wrong way. We get the clone that's closest going off first when in reality, we want the clone that's furthest away to come off first. So what we need to do is cut these all so that the one that comes on last leaves first. So we're gonna actually do this in reverse order. We're gonna start with this top layer and bring this back so it's two frames after this one and then work our way down. If that seems confusing, just watch and it'll make sense to you in a second. So we're gonna go back to, and then we're gonna drag this to here. So if we wanted to cut here, we need to go back one more and then we hold option and the right bracket and we place a cut. Now we're gonna go down to the next clone layer. We're gonna go back to option right bracket and that places a cut. Down one, back two, option right bracket, down one, back two, option right bracket. And now we get kind of this like inverted pyramid thing where it comes on and then the effect holds on and then it goes off by going back into the player. So when we play that back, it looks like this. I know in the actual Gatorade commercial itself, they didn't actually animate the part where the effect comes off. They just held on the effect and then they cut away to something else. And you can hold on the effect as long as you want. But this way, if you don't want to cut your shot, you now know how to animate the effect on and animate the effect off. We have the background on its own layer at the bottom here. And you can see that if I turn it off, then we still have all the players in the foreground, which means that we can actually animate the background to get desaturated and bring emphasis onto the players as this cloning effect happens. So let's go to the Lumetri color. We'll bring that effect onto here. Forget these two, these are the color correction that I applied beforehand. You can see if I turn them off, the shot is very orange. But this Lumetri color effect is going to be our desaturation, so we're going to call it that. And now we're going to open this. We're gonna add a keyframe for saturation. Then we can go to the layer and click U. We want this layer to be fully saturated at the start of the effect. By the time the entire effect is on, we want it to have no saturation. And maybe not no saturation, but let's dial it to like there. And then we want to replicate this keyframe when the effect starts to come off. And when the effect is fully off, we want this to be fully saturated again at 100. Let's control, let's click all of these and click F9 to easy ease, or you can right click and go keyframe assistant, easy ease. This makes your keyframes a little bit more smooth as they come on and off. And now we can play back our full recreated Gatorade clone trail effect that we did in Adobe After Effects. Go, give me something, give me something. 
I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, then please make sure to subscribe to the channel because I have new videos coming out on a regular basis. I'm actually working on a more advanced cloning effect tutorial and I'm excited to share that with you. We're gonna go into some more complicated techniques than the simple stuff that we showed here. If you wanna see full bodies of my work, you can go check me out on Instagram. That is where you're gonna be able to see my finished products and we can also connect over there if you have any more additional questions. Anyways, that is going to be all for this video. So until next time, peace.